All right, so I bought this camera about two and a half months ago and I've been using it extensively on different rigorous shooting scenarios. I've shot a lot of anamorphic projects with it. And there are a couple things that I said previously on my initial review that I actually don't necessarily agree with now. It's a little embarrassing, but I really value being completely honest on this YouTube channel. I know I value videos like this when I was buying gear, making different gear purchases, watching YouTube. So here it is. One very, 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 very important disclaimer that I wanna make is I'm not trying to bash companies. I know companies like Panasonic work extremely hard to make their cameras and different other companies work really hard to push out gear that we want as filmmakers. So I'm not just gonna try nitpicking all the gear that I review or buy or whatever it is. But there's one thing about the S5 II that wasn't really talked about on YouTube. So that's what I wanna touch on. Another disclaimer is I still love this camera. I'm keeping it, I'm not selling it. Overall, I'm happy with the camera. There's just one thing well, a couple things that I wanted to touch on that I'll get into at the end of this video. I'm actually gonna be revisiting all the points that I made initially in my first review. And there are a couple key things that this camera excelled in that I was not expecting that I didn't even touch on in my initial review. So let's not waste any time and get right into it. The first and seemingly most important feature when buying a camera is its image quality. And the image quality out of the S5 II is incredible. It is really sharp. A lot of people have been saying, oh, it's too sharp. And I completely understand that. I like a soft cinematic image, but to me, it doesn't seem super digitally sharp. This is just my opinion. It just has a lot of room for me to play with. I usually soften my images anyways with a diffusion filter or in post, I'll do it. But it gives me this rich detail, not just in sharpness, but in color as well. I'm gonna put this aside or else I'm gonna be flailing it the whole time. The colors in this camera just look good. I've been using Phantom LUTs for years, so all of my cameras match each other and they all basically look the same, but they're matching the Aria Alexa, so I'm completely fine with that. Playing with this footage, I can't really put my finger on it, but the colors are just rich. They look the way they're supposed to. So that was to my surprise because I never really used Panasonic cameras prior to the S5 II. Another important benefit is the IBIS. I did touch on it on the first review, but I am blown away actually using it on projects. There's actually one project that I'm thinking of that I brought a gimbal specifically to use it for the whole day and I didn't even use it. I ended up just shooting handheld with the S5 II because it was so, so smooth. Keep in mind, I wasn't doing sweeping, crazy parallaxes, but the IBIS really made my day easier. And if you shoot a lot of handheld, this camera is a no brainer for me personally. I think IBIS in general is really underrated and is such a useful tool. And this camera just does it better than every single camera on the market right now. The open gate is still an amazing feature. I've shot a couple anamorphic projects since having the camera and having that extra height for resolution to de-squeeze anamorphic footage has just been amazing. The S1H prior was the only mirrorless camera that had this feature and that camera retails for four grand. So to have it in a $2,000 camera is nuts. One thing that really surprised me with this camera is how good the dynamic range is. I initially thought the R5C was better and I was downgrading, but I was totally wrong. It's good enough to where I would choose to use the S5 II on a higher budget client shoot because I know that the sensor has enough information. This wasn't the case with my R5C. I was really hesitant to use that camera on higher budget shoots, specifically because I didn't think it could measure up to my C70 and if I could just use my C70 and have better dynamic range, I would. But with the S5 II, I do use that camera most of the time now because the dynamic range is better than what I thought it would be. Not as good as my C70, but it's good enough to where I would use it over the C70 for portability. So I actually sold my R5C, which was a $4,800 camera at the time. It's gone down in price for the S5 II, and I'm not disappointed one bit. I still don't like the R5C at all. I advocate people to not buy that camera. It doesn't make sense to me, but this camera still doesn't disappoint even with what I'm about to talk about. And now for the reason you probably clicked on this video, I was wrong about the autofocus. For me, it really is a perfect camera to just grab and go. The IBIS and autofocus paired together just make it super easy to use. I said it might've been better than my C70. I even said it was better than the R5C. In my initial review, I was having some issues with the autofocus and I did fix that, but there are a couple specific things about the autofocus that are just 
odd. Hear me out. The autofocus is good. It's so much better than what it was when I had the S1H. The autofocus is good. I don't want people to think I'm saying it's bad. There are just a couple quirks that feel primal, if that makes any sense. Before I get into it, consider subscribing. Like this video, it helps a ton. You might not think it, but liking a video really does tell YouTube that people like the video and it pushes it more and really supports this channel. So if you can just click that little button, that'd be great. I know there's gonna be people that are frustrated. I've already been on the Facebook groups. I hear it all. There's diehard fans for Lumix and Panasonic and I, I'm a fan now, but still just get over it. There are issues and I'm gonna specifically pinpoint what the issues are for anyone looking to purchase this camera. Keep in mind, these issues aren't causing me to sell this camera. So one thing with the autofocus is if you talk with your hands and you put them in front of your face sometimes, it will latch onto your hands. You can see right here, I'm shooting on the C70 and it's not locking onto my hands. The S5 II would have 100% chose my hand in that situation over my face. And that's in whatever focusing mode you're in. I've tried them all. In my Komodo video that you're watching right now, I just had the Komodo rig next to me, not even completely in front of my face. And for some reason it chose to jump on the Komodo rig instead of my face. I don't know why this is. I've tried all different sensitivity settings and nothing has really helped. It's not a complete deal breaker for me. I still use the S5 II more than my C70, even though the C70's autofocus is a tad bit better. Another interesting part of the autofocus that I know can be fixed with firmware is the human selection. So when I'm shooting and I have like three different people, I can actually choose with my joystick which person I wanna focus on. And that's great. But the odd thing is, is that even though I choose the person I wanna focus on, the camera still thinks that it can choose which person it wants to focus on after the fact that I've chosen. So it's happened a couple times on different shoots where I choose a person and then four seconds later, it'll go back to the original person, which doesn't make sense. This can definitely be fixed, but that was a little annoying and counterintuitive with being able to select who I wanted to focus on. Before you hammer me in the comments, I've tried every single different setting from super sensitive to locked on, fast, slow. I've tried it all, every different autofocusing mode. And these are my findings. There is a manual focus override feature, which is great. My C70 has it. But what doesn't make sense about it is when I override the autofocus and I actually choose what I want it to focus on, if I let go, it'll revert back to what it originally thought I should focus on. This may seem like, oh, it's autofocus, Anthony, shoot manual focus, and you won't have an issue with that. And that point would be valid if other cameras didn't do it better. My C70, if I manual focus on, let's say an object or a person, immediately the camera will think, oh, that's what he wants to focus on and it'll lock on that specific object or person. This is something that can easily be fixed and Panasonic, if you're watching this video, please do that, that would be super helpful. I know there are a couple workarounds by setting custom buttons and whatnot, but that's not the point. Other cameras do this better without me having to set a custom button. Which leads me to my next point and this is by far the most annoying point out of all of them. It's touch tracking. This is such a primal way of doing touch tracking in a camera. You have to click a couple different buttons. And even if I set them to custom buttons, which is using two or three of my custom buttons, I have to click multiple buttons just to get the tracking feature. Again, we wouldn't be having this conversation if all the other companies did it better. When I shot with Sony cameras, the only thing I had to do to track anything at any point, doesn't matter what shooting mode I was in, was tap the screen, whether it's an object or a person, and it would immediately track that object or person, or even spot, it would lock onto that spot. For some reason with the S5 II, I have to enter into a dedicated tracking mode, which is set to a custom button. Then I have to turn off subject detection, which makes no sense. And then even when I do all those different things, it's pretty terrible. Like I said, I wanna be as honest as possible and this isn't an exaggeration, it's just bad. I really hope this can be fixed. It's much more usable for me to just be shooting in whatever autofocusing mode I'm in and then just tap the screen to track 
whatever I want to track. If I have to press two or three different buttons and I'm in a really fast running gun situation where my subject is moving a lot, that's just not going to happen and I'm going to end up not using it. And the autofocus goes to the waste in that situation. And that's where I was wrong in my initial review. I said the autofocus was almost as good, if not better than my C70. And that's just not true. I will say one thing though, you can tell the autofocus is powerful. I don't know if that makes sense, but you can tell it has the juice there. It's just the firmware and the development of the autofocus that just isn't fully there yet but i still use it on practically every shoot because it still works for most situations it's just the situations where it doesn't work it's really frustrating and that's not just because it's autofocus that's because it's not as good as other companies autofocus if that makes sense if the tracking features that sony and canon have didn't exist then i probably wouldn't be saying anything at all about the autofocus but they do exist and I've tried them and they make my life so much easier. So those are my opinions on the S52 after multiple months of usage. So I wanna sum up the whole video cause I feel like it was an overload of information as well as most people remember the negatives more than the positives. The image is incredible. The colors are great. The IBIS completely blew me away. The dynamic range was more than I expected especially for a, a camera that's $2,000 and the open gate feature proved itself to be way more useful than I even thought it was gonna be. And the newly found negative is that the autofocus is capable, but primal at best. And yeah, those are my thoughts on the S5 II after multiple different gigs and months of heavy usage. You can see some of my work on my Instagram. I'm currently building a website. So if you're a company that does want to collaborate, please feel free to reach out to me there. But yeah, consider subscribing, like the video, comment down below. If you're angry, comment down below as well. I can't wait to hear it. You know, it's really funny when I say that most of the trolls and angry people don't comment. So I think they might be scared, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how YouTube works, but I'll see you in the next one before I say something stupid.